Hello everyone, welcome back to Aura Battle. I'm Paradox Gamer, thank you for joining me here for the next DLC, which is the Burma Road. And I am on patch 413 right now. And we're going to go for this one here, Burma Road. The British Empire, already struggling in the war with Germany, suffers another gruesome shock when Japan launches a major surprise offensive across the South Pacific. Japan strikes. Following increasing tensions with the Western powers, Japan has launched a widespread surprise offensive against its adversaries. British forces already drained by two years of war with Germany must now resist the battle-hardened Japanese across Southeast Asia. So let's see here, we have uh, Thailand, we got Japan and British. I'm gonna go with normal difficulty as usual. Let's check out the specialization panel. Uh, there's a lot of stuff here. So we start in 1940, we can get Magnetron Radar, which adds another radar range, or actually goes up to 8 for all warships. And that allows scrambling later on which is land-based fighter aircraft can take off move and attack during the same turn which is pretty nice and also land-based fighter aircraft loses less efficiency during the turn of the takeoff that's a tenor it costs 10 um, the first one here only cost five and then we have specialization training newly purchased infantry units start with one experience star we'd like to start with uh, that early on if you want to go for it also tank school New per newly purchased tanks start with one experience star and flight school newly purchased air units start with one experience star that one goes on to pilot rotation so default repair maintains 70% experience for air units and elite repair cost is reduced by 20% for all for air units. That's really nice, but it also costs 10. We also have special services. SAS and SPS commandos become available for purchase. That only costs 3. We got drop tanks, fighter aircraft, fuel limit increased by 2 turns. War economy plus two land and naval command points and plus one air command point that's throughout the campaign also good to get early on and female factory labor which is plus two land and naval command points and plus one air as well plus five and six respectively going back to the magneton radar uh, later on in 1942 we'll get Lindley's act allows purchase of specific American and British tanks. Also the cent centimetric radar which adds radar range of 12 to warships and 5 to all aircraft. There's also proximity fuse coming in 43 land and naval anti-air weapons deal more damage to enemy aircraft. We got metal detectors. Engineers can move and clear mines in the same turn. Engineers do not take damage when running into hidden mines. Okay, and advanced aeronautics. More advanced aircraft become available early in the campaign. And Hobart's Funnies, Minesweeper and Siege Tanks will become available for purchase. Churchill Tanks can build pontoon bridges. Alright, a lot of stuff here. Uh, not a lot, a lot of dependencies, which means all of these here you can get without getting anything else. But these three depends on magnetron radar and nothing else. So, and then pilot rotation depends on flight school and female factory labor depends on war economy. All right, let's go back to the uh, first scenario, Operation Kochol. Thailand, December 1941. Japanese troops have landed on the Malayan Peninsula as part of their widespread offensive in Southeast Asia. To challenge this invasion, an ad hoc British force has launched a preemptive attack into Thailand. All right.
So according to the website, we should have the whole Thai Order of Battle in this uh, DLC, as well as the Indian troops. Let's continue here. Right, mission briefing. In an effort to challenge and delay the Japanese advance from the beachheads in Malaya, British and Commonwealth forces have been assembled for a preemptive attack through neutral Thailand. We cannot predict how the Thai will react to this violation of the territory, but must be prepared to face resistance from some of their security and police units. Our ultimate objective is to reach the ledge, a narrow road wedged between hills on one side and river on the other. By blowing up the hillside, this route should be blocked and thus significantly delay the Japanese advance. Further to the west, a column of Indian troops is tasked to secure additional Thai border checkpoints. This should prevent the Japanese from using this major roadway for their advance into Malaya. Finally, a third column is expected to arrive soon on the easternmost road. It is important that unless our flanks are threatened, each column pursues its own objective. Okay. Well, let's see what we got here. So we got Great Britain and Australia in this camp, in this uh, scenario. Primary objective is to capture and hold Batong. Batong is here. No special award. And also store the Japanese advance. Resist the Japanese forces for the duration of the battle or complete all other objectives. Alright, so that's a new thing in this DLC. We haven't seen that before in Order of Battle. So that leaves us two choices. We have to capture and hold Batong, and then we can either stall the Japanese advance for the remainder of the 25 turns, or we can complete all the secondary objectives and thus end the game that way. Then we don't have to finish all 25 turns. That's a new invention. That I, uh, I kind of like that. Uh, let's go through the secondaries. Destroy the hillside rocks to block the ledge. An elite fighter squadron for use in the following scenario is awarded for completing this bonus objective. Okay. Destroy three Japanese tanks. Apparently they start up here. Uh, a unique tank commander is awarded for completing this bonus objective scroll through that. Alright, and capture both tie checkpoints. We got two tie checkpoints and we'll get one specialization point for that. I'll definitely be interested in that. Alright, let's check out our forces. So apparently the third column is going to come in here. And we got the two first columns already in place. In the center here we have the British. Uh, British Infantry 421. They got an attack defense of 12 and 12 versus infantry and 8 and 9 versus armor. And we have the heavies with value 1317 against infantry and 811 against armor. So armor against armor, these units are equal, but against infantry, the heavy infantry is much better. You can also defend against aircraft. Attack against air, three. That's interesting. And they also have the switch to uh, mortar capability, so they can shoot two hexes with mortars. And they've got British Engineers 41. They've got, uh, got an attack of 14 and a defense of 10 versus infantry. And 6 9 versus armor. This down here is also British infantry. And then up here we have. What is this? Colonial infantry. So these are the Indians. Kololo Infantry 41, they got value of 1010. 
So they're uh, slightly worse than the regular British troops. Three infantry units. There's a Matilda Mark I, which is an infantry support tank. Early war design. It is 1010 against infantry and 312 against armor. So it's very well protected, but does very little damage. It is an infantry tank, as I said, so its primary job is to support the infantry. And it's not a tank hunter by any stretch. Then they got a land chase to mark one 6x4 armored car. Yeah, this one is even worse. It's uh, 2 attack against armor, 5 defense, 5 8 against infantry. This is a classic scout car. It's got nothing else going for it. And then we got 300 points and 10 land command points to spend. So let's see what we can buy. Starting with recon units, we got a Daimler Dingo, uh, which is also a scout car. 3-7 against armor, 3-8 against uh, infantry. Or a Humber Mark II, which is 2-3 against armor. Now this one is significantly better. As we can see here for only five more points. It's got immune to supply, quick retreat, no entrenchment, flexible path pathing and fleeting presence. What is fleeting presence? This unit cannot capture hexes or victory points. Right. Flexible uh, pathing is unit can divide its movement points in several moves. It cannot entrench. Units retreat from combat when taking minor damage and supply immune. It's the same with the other one. Infantry wise, we've got the British infantry that we've already seen, the British engineers and the British heavy infantry, and also the colonial that we've also seen. And then we got the Gurkhas. Gurkhas 41, they're concealable and got light freight. Uh, let's see, there are 14 14 against infantry. So they're slightly better than regular infantry. Um, and even got better attack than the heavy infantry. So these are the best attack units that we have uh, of infantry. They also cost a lot, they cost 60. Tanks, we got Crusader Mark II. It's got 10 slash 6 attack against infantry and 11 defense. 9 to 11 attack against armor and 13 defense. And then the Valentine is slightly worse. It's better defensively though, but worse attack wise. Especially against armor. And then there's the Matilda Mark II. Yeah, again, that's an infantry tank by design. It's a very well protected. I think as a tank hunter, the Crusader is the better choice here. Anti-tank wise, we've got only a QF two pounder, and its attack against armor is eight, defense twelve. It's not good against infantry. Artillery wise, we got the. Um, 3.7 inch mountain howitzer, which got light freight as well, and mountain it's a mountain gun, can be moved through mountain terrain. I think that's going to be pretty handy in this campaign. Uh, we got the more heavier stuff here, the 4.5 inch medium, and the 5.5 inch, and the QF25 pounder. Anti-air, we got the Beforce 40mm, as just about any nation in World War II had these. <laughs> uh, and there's also the 3.7 inch. Uh, I can't buy any fighters now, so I will not go through those, all the bombers. We can do those later on. So, let's see. Let's see, I got 10 command points. I could get a Humber. 
And that will leave me with nine. I definitely need artillery. I think I'll just start with a mountain howitzer. And that should definitely be towed. So that would cost three command points. That's a total of four, which leaves me with six. So I can get two infantry units. Why not get the Gurkhas, which are the best? So let's get um, a Gurkha here. Do I need to support the Indian army? I probably do. They will receive one Gurkha. Because they only got colonial infantry. Well, actually, I can just switch these British infantry up that way and then get the Gurkhas. Get the Gurkhas over here. And get one more of those. Here. And then I wanted the artillery, the mountain gun, with a truck. Place that here so it can actually reach the outskirts of Betong right away. And that leaves us with just one point, which I will use to get that recon Humbermont 2. Place that here. That leaves me with 30 points. Now let me just see if I want to switch these units around a little bit. So the engineers will take care of the mines, and then I can move through. Yeah, maybe take that one back and then get these guys over here. Alright, let's try this. Let's get this show on the road. Alright. I cannot command the Indians. Okay, let's get rid of those mines first. There we go. And then we need to scout in somehow. Um, that's what we've got the scout cap for. That's probably... <laughs> they probably got units in here. So how far are we going to move? It, it, got, it can move twice, so we can just move up first. Like... Like this. Oh, okay. High police force right in front of us. Okay. Let's bomb that with the artillery. Unfortunately, these guys can't reach. These guys could if I move them up that way. Okay, let's get the Gurkhas up here then. They have a chance of eliminating that unit, but they won't. And then we can move the regular infantry up. And that reveals another unit. Okay, and then... Hmm. I think we should still de destroy the police. Let's do that. And move these guys up here and do some damage to the other type of these unit. Then we're gonna move this infantry over here. That's gonna stick with the Indians. And then the heavies can't really move that far. Oh, this one can still move. Ah. So if that moves out of the way, like that, and you can get the heavies over here. And let's pop out with the light mortars. Alright, that's the end of my moves. Let's see what the Indians are up to. They run into some Thai police as well. they're easy to fight 
I think they might. Oh, there's also a Japanese scout car over there. The police unit is dead. And the infantry might attack that scout car. Yes, doing one damage. Okay. Japanese turn, which also includes the Thai. They fight back, taking four damage. And we got more Thai police arriving. And even more. Let's take a shot of the scout car, taking one damage in return. And we got Japanese aircraft. That looks like a scout. And that looks like a fighter. Two damage to my scout car from that attack. I've got nothing to, to do against those guys. Alright. That's it for turn one. So uh, I think I'll put a break in here. Thank you guys for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good one. Bye-bye.